Sunday School class. We're so glad that you came to join us today. And today we're going to be talking about faith with no shelf life. And so glad that you came and, and joined us. And I want to say to all of you, I'm humbled to get to, to speak this morning and teach for Jesus. I am grateful for the power of the written word of God. So let's start in Ephesians chapter 6. And I just want to take note of three verses out of chapter 6. We've read them over and over for the past few weeks. But there's nothing like repetition. So Ephesians 6, chapter 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in who? In the Lord. Not in my own strength. So let's just take note of that. First, we're going to be strong in the Lord. Then look at verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. So, first of all, we're going to be strong in his might. And then we are called to do something. What is that? Stand. We are called to stand our ground. And then the, the scripture that we're going to be focusing on today is scripture 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And if you look at verse 18, there's a key word in there, watching. And I won't jump into that because I know we're going to have more lessons in this passage of scripture. But I just wanted to draw out those things. Verse 10, be strong not in your own strength, but in the strength of the Lord. Verse 13, whatever you do, stand your ground. Verse 16, above all, take up your shield of faith. And 18, watch. So it's very, this lesson for me was extremely difficult. I thought about it. I prayed it over. And um, it was very hard for me because everything in the Christian walk hinges on our faith. Everything. <clears throat> your belief that God is even real yes. hinges on your faith. Yes. Your belief that he created everything hinges on your faith. We have provision by faith. Mm -hmm. We have healing by faith. There's so many areas where faith touches it that it's it's almost like looking at a giant ocean of what do I talk about? <laughs> mm -hmm. So I just ask the Lord to narrow this down and, and say today what he wants you to know and take away about faith, about the shield of faith. Um Shai was did an awesome job teaching on the helmet of salvation. Mm -hmm. I took away from that lesson that I don't need Prozac mm -hmm. or any other kind of medication to fix me. If I have a problem, the Word of God renews my mind. The Word of God heals my body. The Word of God keeps my helmet of salvation on. Amen. That was so good. And then Autumn taught on the breastplate of righteousness, which was so precious by acting and applying the traits of Christ. I can protect my heart and what keeps me alive as a believer, the breastplate of righteousness. And then Nellie, wow, girding our loins with truth, but not just any truth, truth that is genuine, truth that has not been devilishly altered, yes. truth that is simple and genuine makes us the real thing. And that's, that's what she talked about. That was so good. Yes. Well, today we're looking at the shield of faith and a continual epic battle that we're waged in. Now, in this passage of script in, in Ephesians 6, 16, is faith referred to as an offensive weapon or a defensive protection? Now, y'all help me teach this lesson. I need <clears throat> input. So you're going to have to talk loud so everybody online can hear. If you want to write in, if you're watching, uh, Amy's watching the phone, and we'll be happy to respond to your questions or comments. But I want to, I want to know in this passage of scripture is is the the weapon, the, the shield of faith, is it an offensive weapon or is it a defensive protection? Well, in this one, it says it's a defensive because it shields me from the dark exactly. of the enemy. Exactly. So, so I'm hiding behind it. Right. So, so you we're looking at a, a an item of defense. Okay. Okay. So here's the first question: Does a shield expire? No. 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 That's ridiculous. Does a shield lose its strength and importance if it's laid down? 
Is it still a shield? It's still, it's still, a, shield. It's still a shield. Even if the kids slide down a hill in the snow on, on one on uh, happy snowy day, it's still a shield. It does not lose its importance or its strength. So what makes a shield work? The one who's holding it. The one who, who's holding it. Yes. Any more input? The one who's holding it. What it's made of. What you use it for. What you use it for. What it's made of. So if you leave it laying down, what you're really saying is, in fact, that the shield is effective only as the soldier picks it up yeah. and uses it. Yes. That's good. Only as, as we pick it up and use it. Okay, so faith in the scripture is a symbol. It is a shield. Um, Ephesians says, above all. I wonder why he would say, above all, taking the shield of faith. Okay, well, he said, he goes on to explain in the scripture, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith what? What are you going to do with this thing? You're going to slide down the hill in the snow on it? You're going to quench all the fiery darts. You're going to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Matthew Henry's commentary said that the devil is the wicked. Yes. He is the wicked. And his, his uh, desire, his ultimate goal is to make us wicked. And his darts, they come and they are temptations. Mm -hmm. And they are set on fire. And if he can get one to land in our spirit, then he sends <clears throat> our souls on fire of hell. Mm -hmm. Just one. Mm -hmm. That's all he needs. So now the scripture says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able, thank God for this part, you shall be able yeah. to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked. So none of those can stick in you. Now, doing a little bit of research, the Roman shield is called the scutum. And history tells us it was a very big shield. Somewhere between three and a half feet tall and almost three feet wide. Almost like a door that, you, that, wow. that the soldier would pick up. I mean, it's big and it's tall. And anyone who gets behind it and kneels is completely covered. Completely. It's like a door with a big metal knob in the center of it called the boss. <laughs> if the boss knocks you in the head, you're gonna be, you're gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt. And, and so the shield could be used as a, an weapon. offensive weapon to knock someone down, to push through an enemy force. You know, it could be used like that. <coughs> the, uh, let's see. <coughs> it would deflect stones, heavy objects hurled its way, and arrows with no problems. Mm -hmm. Its thickness at the rim was about four inches, about as wide as your hand. Can you imagine trying to pick this thing up? Okay, it's huge to begin with. It is not made out of styrofoam. It's made out of two pieces of wood, wood glued together, and that's not all. Then they wrapped it with canvas, and then they wrapped the canvas with calf skin. And then they put that metal knob and strap on it. Ugh, and that wasn't it. They put uh, metal on the bottom and on the top so when they had to stick it on the ground and get behind it, it wouldn't tear the shield up. Four inches thick. Wow. That was, that was incredible to me. Me it as a woman, strong. I'm going to need strength in the Lord to keep this shield up. <laughs> no wonder he said, be strong in the Lord <laughs> and in the power of <laughs> his might. Because you see, it's impossible for women to keep the shield of faith up without the strength of the Lord. But you know what you said about him shooting a fiery dart? Mm -hmm. And one dart being able to set our soul on fire? Yes. That scripture came to me immediately that a little leaven leavens the whole lump. There you go. One That's bit. why it's so important. We've yes. got to have this on us. Yes, we have got to be. Or we are infected. Covered. Yes. Now, this, as we talked about, you can imagine a man in a battle. This is an indispensable piece of protection. It's like you're in a tank. It, it is. It's, it's the only big thing you can really get behind and totally hide. Even if, like, you get hit with something and it knocks your helmet off, you can still get behind the mm -hmm. shield of faith mm -hmm. and, and, and stay behind it and be, and be protected. But it's only effective if it's raised. Mm -hmm. 
You know, when, when, the, when the armies get mowed down, I'm sure you've watched the movies, the soldiers, when they start falling, you just see shields flopping everywhere. Because that's like the biggest piece of armor that they have is their shield. There's nothing wrong with the shield. It just needs to be taken, and it needs to be raised, and it needs to be used to deflect enemy fire. So first we're going to look at some facts good morning. Some facts about our shield of faith. First of all, everyone has one. So somebody get Romans 12 and verse 3 for me. Romans 12, and if you don't get there before I do, I'm going to read it. For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to who? Everyone. Every man the measure of faith. So nobody is excused. Thank the Lord God has provided this for us and given every one of us. Sometimes we think we don't have any. Well, that's not true. The Bible says you have been dealt a measure of faith. Secondly, like a shield, it's big enough to afford the protection that we need. Let's look at Luke 17. Luke 17, verses 5 and 6 says, And the apostles said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. Where does faith come from? Reading the Word. From reading the <coughs> Word. That's right. So we do get our, our faith increased by God at times when He works for us and, and does miracles for us. This is true. But really, faith is increased when you read your Bible. And faith is increased when you memorize the Bible. Faith is increased when you pray the Bible and you're encouraged by what the Bible says. So the apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you had faith as a what? A grain of mustard seed. Now, Mama just said that a little leaven, leaven is the whole lump. So a little faith will take you a long ways. It'll move mountains. Look what it says. If you had faith as a grain of a mustard seed, if that's all God dealt to you, was it teeny, 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 tiny, 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 little mustard seed faith? You might say unto this sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. Now let's look at Matthew 17 and 20. This is a similar scripture, but I just like the way that he said it so much. Matthew 17 and 20. Matthew 17 and 20 says, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Thirdly, when we're talking about the facts, the facts about faith, it is the chosen defense by God to stop injury from enemy arrows. Ephesians 6.16 says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. If we flip over to uh, the faith chapter, anybody know where that's at? Hebrews 12. It's not faith, Hebrews 12, it's Hebrews 11. If we look at Hebrews 11, 32 through 34, it says, what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak. And y'all, it is not fair to only have one hour in Sunday school to talk about faith. <laughs> we could just start a, a faith month. <coughs> and you could talk about faith for years on end because the entire Bible is about love and faith. Mm -hmm. But he says, of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith had their shields up. They subdued kingdoms. They wrought righteousness. They obtained promises. They stopped the mouths of lions. Right here it is. Quench the violence of fire. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> There's that our shield doing its job. Quenching the fiery darts of the wicked. Escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong. Waxed valiant in fight. Turned to flight the armies 
of the aliens. Now let's look at 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9. We may have to go back and visit that chapter again because it's so beautiful. That is the faith chapter. 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9 says, Be sober. Be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast while you're sleeping. In the faith. In the faith is what he says. So you're going to resist him with the shield that God has designed for you to use to defeat the enemy. When he comes at you, you already have protection provided for you as long as you pick it up, as long as you raise it. As long as you use it. Who resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions, your buddies right beside you in the war are going through the same thing. Mm -hmm. Your soldiers right there beside you, you're fighting together. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. James 4, 7, can anybody quote it? Submit. Yes, submit yourself therefore to God. This is James 4, 7. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So this shield of faith not only deflects his arrows, but is able to run the devil off. Thank God. Thank you. Woo. Okay, again, here's another fact about our faith. It enables us to stand our ground and have victory. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 6 and 13, let's take a, a quick look at that. Ephesians 6 and 13 says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to what? Stand. Withstand in the evil day, and having done all, stand. Stand, therefore. Man, it's stand, stand, stand mm -hmm. your ground. Stand, stand, stand your ground. Mm -hmm. Immovable saints are the saints that have their shields up. Now, if you just hold your fist up here, if I just said, all right, all of y'all hold your fist up for the rest of the class. Be tired. You're going to be tired. It's going to be fatiguing. So again, we go back to Ephesians 6 and 10. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You've got a huge weapon of defense here that's provided for you as long as you have faith in God to provide the strength you need to hold it up. 1 John 5, 4 and 5. I love <laughs> this scripture. So good. First John 5, 4 and 5 says, For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. You mean this faith that we have can overcome the world? You better believe it. That's what the Bible says. That's a fact. That's a faith fact right there. Here's another fact. Every believer is commanded, not asked, to take up their shield of faith. God wants you to win. In 1 Peter it says, God has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him, through the knowledge of Christ. And so the Lord has provided it for us, and my goodness, all we have to do is depend on the strength of the Lord to help us keep this shield of faith up mm -hmm. so we can stand our ground. Ephesians 6.16 says, Above all, taking the shield of faith. Hebrews 10.38 says, The just shall live. 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 What's opposite living? Dying. Dying. <laughs> the just shall live by if they keep their shields up. And if they don't, they die. Mark 11, 22, Jesus says, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Mark 11, 22. Now a soldier learns to trust in his shield as he tests it again and again and again in warfare. Faith is more necessary. It is our all and all in an hour of temptation. This shield of faith can turn every way. It is not a stationary piece mm -hmm. of armor. Mm -hmm. This armor turns every way. Every way it turns the battle back on every side. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Faith is so incredible. And it's just believing God. Mm -hmm. 
That's what it is. It can turn every way and stop every fiery dart of wickedness. But our faith is no good until it's tried. We don't even know it'll work until the heat is on. We don't even know it'll work for us until there's a battle. We cannot experience victory unless we suffer attack. We got to know that this thing works so God puts it in our hands and then he allows trouble to come and assault you and see if you'll use it. <laughs> or if you'll just fall back and lay down. And lay. I hate those movies where the girl runs and she's running from the bad guy and she falls down. Yes. And then she lays there going, <laughs> oh, <laughs> ladies, get up. <laughs> And I know in your heart you hate it too, and you're not that kind of person. Or you wouldn't be fighting the good fight of faith here on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. Taking up your shield of faith. Continuing to walk when there's trouble. Mm -hmm. Continuing to go on whenever you don't feel like it. Yeah. I mean, you just got to keep going. <coughs> so we don't know it's any good until it's used. So we're talking about a faith that has no shelf life. Well, I'm getting in my 40s. <laughs> okay. just a baby. But you know what? The shield of faith has not changed. The shield of faith has not aged. It has not weakened in any point or any area. It's still good. As long as I'll do my part to take it up, like Ephesians says, above all, take up your shield of faith and stand your ground. So I wanted to share with you because... Faith has been such a huge subject. A lot of people just want to go wild on faith and just leave everything mm -hmm. else out. It's only one spoke in the wheel. Mm -hmm. We can't build a church on faith. No. On faith talk or faith healing or mm -hmm. faith whatever. Mm -hmm. Faith gets your money. Mm -hmm. Faith works. This is true. But I want you to know that there's been some tests. And there has been some hard trials. Mm -hmm. But that's where your faith shield is tested and you can trust you can trust it. Mm -hmm. We're trusting in God. Okay, so the test of my shield, my own personal walk, these were tests that shook my faith. I mean, it was like a giant bomb went off, and I felt my shield going. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been around um, on the 4th of July whenever they turn off, they shoot off the fireworks? Mm -hmm. It's like the whole <laughs> ground is <laughs> and trembles, and, and everything shakes. Ugh. Well, if it wasn't the fireworks, we would be fearful. And these were times in my life where I was fearful. One of them, uh, we were going to go to La Mesa. And we were going to have a, an incredible service. We knew it was going to be incredible. I was in Dollar General. And I believed, without doubt, that God was going to do a work. And so I, I found a lady in Dollar General that was in a wheelchair. And I said, if you'll come to La Mesa tonight, the Lord is going to heal you. And I believe that with all my heart and was so excited to give her what I had. To give her some, some hope in Jesus Christ. And so we went to La Mesa. We prayed. And I personally was there. with. She came. The lady came. It was so awesome. And we prayed and prayed and laid hands on that lady and nothing happened and nothing happened and she didn't get out of the wheelchair. That hurt my faith. Yeah. It hurt my feelings. And that was at least 20 years ago and I still hadn't forgot it. How about this? <laughs> you pray for your kids and they don't get instantly healed. You know? I'm just trying to be real with y'all because... Nobody wants to talk about defeat, but defeat happens. And when when the enemy assaults you, sometimes it just happens that you don't you don't keep your shield of faith up high enough. Jessica's death to cancer was probably the hardest thing we've ever had to face. It it I felt totally stripped of faith. I felt like God had totally abandoned us and that we were alone. And, and all this faith talks was a, was a big hoax, and I was a dummy for believing it. That's what it felt like. When she died, because we really, we truly, with all of our hearts, believed according to the scripture that she would be healed without any question. I was surprised when she died. 
even though I saw her starve to death in front of my eyes. And, it, and the devil kept whispering, your shield don't work. This faith that you have is a lie. Oh, he just kept whispering. So I just told the Lord, I, I said, Lord, I, I don't know where you're at. I don't know where I'm at. Right now, it's a bloody mess everywhere. There's confusion. What does the Bible say? There is confusion. A garment's rolled in blood in every battle. And I went to bed that night. I didn't want to get up. I was happy to die. Just let me die and get it over with. Because I'd just be with her and I'd be out of trouble and I wouldn't have to face anybody and my faith talk and blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm talking about. It was terrible. And I went to bed that night and the Lord came to me in a dream. Years before Jessica's death, I had fought and won a sound battle against the spirit of fear. I mean, hands down. I won through the Word of God, and it was the Word of God that brought me through it. And so I was laying there in bed, and I had this dream that I was being attacked again by this horrible spirit of fear. And it was just raining down and just taking me over, and I couldn't win. And in the, in the dream, I stood up, and I pointed my finger, and I said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. That's what I said in my dream. And immediately I woke up, and the Lord spoke to me, and he said, just as I was with you then, I am with you now. I have never left you. And right then, a weight lifted off of me that I, I mean, it truly was the peace that passes understanding. You don't get it. You don't even know why. My family around me was still bawling and crying, and I had peace, and I didn't understand why I had peace. It was because God was doing a special work in my heart concerning my faith. I lifted my shield again. Why? Because the scripture says that God cannot lie. And I believe God. Amen. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ, the same, yesterday, today, and forever. I got to looking at Job. Job didn't give up on God. And the Lord was merciful. And in the end, he established him. He healed him. He was, and he greatly blessed him. Then I began to look at past victories I had. He reminded me of the sound victory I won over fear. Well, what about all the rest of them, Rebecca? Is that all I've ever done for you? Aren't we so quick to trump up the big trouble and forget about what God has already done? Mm -hmm. That is a, a, a perfect way to let your shield down. Mm -hmm. Just talk about all the failure. Mm -hmm. But I want to just bring it up to you today so you know I face failure too. But that's not where I ended. And that is not where I'm going to stay. Amen. Failure isn't final unless you just lay down and let it waller all over you. Yes. Get up and take up your shield of faith again. So I began to look at the past victories I had. One, and I know this is probably going to be funny to you, but I, I struggled with it. And that was allergies to cats in particular, and Julie can attest for me, when I picked up a cat and held it, my eyes literally would, the whites of them would turn red and swell up, and my eyes would almost swell completely shut. I was so allergic to them. And I was trying my best to have faith in God <laughs> <laughs> that he's going to heal me of them allergies. So I was over at my sister's house for Thanksgiving, and she had a cat in the house. And I, I can barely stand to be around a cat, let alone a house filled with cat hair. So I knew I had something on my hands here. I was going to have to. So before I went, I said, Lord, I am not going to be allergic to cats anymore. I'm healed by your stripes. You said you healed me. I will not be allergic to cats anymore. Thank you for healing me. So when I got there to her house, I found the little black cat. And I perched the little booger on my shoulder and carried him all day long. And from that day to this, I have never had another yeah. allergy to a cat. Praise the Lord. Faith is real. And it works. It takes, it takes a little bit of sand mm -hmm. that just says, I don't care what the circumstances are or what the punishment might be. I just believe God. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to do it. So then I thought about another one that the Lord helped us through. We had a horse that belonged to somebody else, and you probably heard this testimony. But he was turned out in our pasture. We had no pens to get him up. He had run through the fence and had shredded 
the front of his chest and legs. He, I mean, it was just laid open and blood pouring out. He was in bad shape, needed to go to the vet immediately. And we had no way to load him. And Sid and Julie, my sister, and myself were out there chasing this wild horse around, trying to figure out how we're gonna get him in the trailer. So we went down in the field and we had another horse and we thought just maybe, maybe this horse would get in the trailer if she was tied in the trailer. So we, we opened the trailer door, tied her inside. We chased him all over the place. Of course, he's like, forget that. They throw the tail over the back and just hightail it everywhere, just making a mess of what he's already got on him. And so we stopped and prayed. And we said, Lord, load that horse in the name of Jesus. There's no way we can help this horse. And he doesn't belong to us. And we don't want him to be in trouble on our account. We need to help him. I am not standing here. And Sid and Julie can attest to it. That horse turned around and walked in the trailer and loaded himself. Oh, wow. And we shut the gate and went, Wah! Praise God! That's incredible! Yes. Faith works. Yes. He is yeah. real. Jesus is real. And the faith shield that you're going to hold up is the same as mine. Mm -hmm. It's God's given it to you. Your provision is there. All you have to do is pick it pick up. It. Pick it up and use it. So then I thought about um, a situation with my kids. Maybe you don't have allergies and maybe you don't have uh, horses, but you probably have kids. <laughs> so Savannah was waking up somewhere around 10 or 12 o'clock almost every night with night terrors. And if you have a child that's ever had night terrors, you know what kind of excruciating, horrifying grievance a night terror is. She would lay in bed and with her eyes wide open, staring up at the ceiling, she screamed uncontrollably, like someone was cutting her legs off. Mm -hmm. And I would, I ran in there and I, I grabbed her and I said, honey, honey, I'm right here. She never heard me. She continued to thrash and, and scream and look at the ceiling. Like she was possessed. It was terrifying. So I began to take the word of God in there every time she would have a night terror and I just lay it on her. And I'd say in the name of Jesus, you not terror and fear, get out of her in the name of Jesus. And we quote scriptures together. I will both lay me down in peace and mm -hmm. sleep, for thou, Lord, only makes me to dwell in safety. Amen. And we quoted those together before she went to bed. I prayed them over her and, and rebuked the spirit of fear and terror out of her life. And the Lord touched her, and she didn't have any more. Now, that was a victory for me that nobody knows. Yes. That's awesome. You know, it, it's something, your faith fight is personal. I can't fight yours. And you can't hold up my shield either. You've got to take your own and hold it up. One of the greatest healings that I had, because I want to get to healing other than just allergies, <coughs> is uh, like Chris, Shai's husband had a, a torn knee meniscus. Is that what it is? Meniscus or ACL. Something was torn in there. And um, I was being a goofball, and I was riding my husband's big dirt bike. And I just love YZ250s. That's my favorite motorcycle. <laughs> and we were at a track that had really tight turns. And I was used to just being out in a field where you can just jump and, and then turn, make a big turn and come back again and jump again. And there's just no other motorcycle that has the power like a YZ250 did. And so I thought, I'm going to ride this thing. I'm going to ride it down here on this track. And uh, we were all together, and I made a tight turn, and it was too tall for me to, to hold up, so I just kind of leaned over with my foot. Well, when I did, the whole thing just laid down and just took my knee and just rolled it. And I heard it go, and I, it was, it hurt so bad. And Chris and Shaw were there, and after that, we, were, we went to the restaurant. You know, I was trying to be tough and just walk it off, and I was Oh, man, that thing hurt. Oh, I was limping. And, man, uh, Chris was calling me something, hop along Cassidy or something. I can't remember. It was terrible. And um, I went home that evening, and that thing was just, it was swelling. The pain was excruciating, and it continued to get worse. I was staying with uh, Sid's mom and dad, and the next day was Sunday. So we get up and go to church. I couldn't even put my foot on the floor. It hurt so bad, and the swelling was huge. And um, 
so I, I, I wore crutches and just kind of crutched around that day on Sunday and kind of made a day of it. Then we got home that night and I was going to, I was going to get up and just, you know, all right, Lord, I'm going to take my healing. And the devil was saying, it's going to hurt so bad. As soon as you step out of that bed, you're going to fall on the floor. And here I was laying under the covers thinking, trying not to believe him, <laughs> you know, <laughs> trying not to. And uh, he kept talking and, and saying that it was going to be bad. And, and I said, Lord, your word says in Mark 11:23, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. And I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to take you at your word. This is your promise. You wrote the book. I believe it. Okay, I say to this knee, knee, you are healed. In the name of Jesus, whatever's tore up in there is going to be fixed. I am not going to the doctor. I am healed. And so I laid there and the Holy Spirit said, well, if you're healed, get up. <laughs> okay. And I was saying, okay, well, what do I have to do to, you know, because faith is no good unless you act on it. That's right. Faith without works is dead, dead being alone. So I said, okay, I'm going to get out of bed, devil. I am going to get out of bed. I'm fixed up. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And I was trying to pump myself up. I was trying to go, come on, shield faith. Come on, shield faith. Oh, yeah. Whoa. I was not feeling it. <laughs> and so finally, I, I said to myself, because I was sick of the devil talking to me, you've got to get mad at the devil mm -hmm. and be sick of the state that you're yes. in to the point that you're like, ah, yes. I don't care what you say. I am getting up. Yes. And so I laid there and I said, all right, this is my plan. I'm going to throw back these covers and I'm going to high step into the kitchen. <laughs> and that, and I am going to prove that you heal me, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And you are not going to let me fall on the floor. Yes, I'm going to be healed. And so I laid there a little longer. Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I hadn't put my foot on the floor for a couple days and it was hurting and Sid had gotten out of the bed and gone to the bathroom and crawled back over my knee and hit it with his shin. It was oh. like, ah! So, finally I got up the guts. And I said, okay, okay, here we go. And I threw off the covers and I got up and I high-stepped into the kitchen. And it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I did not fall down in the floor. I high-stepped into the kitchen and... Mimi was in the kitchen making coffee. I said, look what Jesus did. Look what Jesus did. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. Amen. And it, it, it was still hurting, but nothing like it was before. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And the more I testified about my healing, the, the more it was healed yes. until it was completely healed. And that knee has never given me trouble again. And it was the bad one I tore up when I was riding horses with Dad. Wow. The Lord healed my knee. Amen. Yes. And I mean, I can do crazy things today. I can play okay. baseball with the we kids. We know that. Because yeah. my knee is healed. Amen. Yes. Faith is awesome. Yeah. It's just a matter of if we will if believe God it. and say, I will take up my shield of faith. I will. And nobody's going to stop me, devil. Make up your mind. So when you start looking at the victories that you've had, instead of exalting the defeats that mm -hmm. you have, you begin to see that God's helped you all along. Mm -hmm. And He has won victories for you over and over. Mm -hmm. Miraculous provision that we didn't know was coming would come to us in the mail. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, it's amazing what God can do. If you just sat here and I gave you time to think about it, you can probably fill a whole page full yes. of what God has done yes. for you personally. Yes. Either yes. healing, either provision, either deliverance. I mean, all kinds of wonderful, miraculous works yes. that only faith can bring. Woo. I'm telling you, this shield of faith is something we cannot afford to let it leak down. No. we got to hold it up. Okay. Now, I just want I said all that to say this. When I made the decision at Jessica's death that I was going to believe God 
anyway, despite the outcome, even if I didn't understand, it was a turning point in my faith. It, it was when I began to hold it up like I'm supposed to hold it up. It was an increase of the strength of the power of God, if you will, in my life. That when, when he came and delivered me of that, that deadly grief that was killing me, when he delivered me, I realized this is more important than I thought. This walk of faith is the most important piece of armor that I have. Because I have control of lifting it up, putting it down, turning it from side to side. If it's over here, turn it over here. If it's over there, I can turn it over here. If it's back there, I can turn around. Wherever the battle ensues upon me, I can move my shield. This change and turning point in my faith came after I resolved to trust God and leave the results to Him. And I want to talk to you about something that causes a lot of believers to lose their faith and to lower their shield. And it is called the Jonah Syndrome. Those who allow this syndrome, the Jonah Syndrome, will continue and be fatally wounded and also fatally wound many others. Because the Jonah spirit is fueled by selfishness. The Jonah Syndrome says, God, if you don't do it my way or how I expected, then I'm mad. Yeah. Yeah. Because you didn't do it just exactly like I wanted it. Let's go look at Jonah in Jonah chapter 3. Jonah chapter 3 verse 1 says, And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah. Has the word of the Lord ever come to you? Of course. When you read your Bible and your heart is enlightened <coughs> and you feel the presence of God speak to you, that's the word of the Lord coming to you. Well, the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, the great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So what... Who was, what words were Jonah going to be using? What, which ones? God's words. He was going to use God's words. That's the most powerful words that we can use. Now Jonah was a prophet. And he was going to go say what God told him to say. So Jonah arose in verse 3 and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey. And he, went, he began to cry right here in verse 4. He began to enter into the city a day's journey. He's already walked for a day with this message. And he said, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So verse 5, the people of Nineveh believed God. And they proclaimed a fast. And they put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. And then look at verse 10 with me. And God saw their works, the works of the Ninevites, mm -hmm. that they turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil that he said that he would do to them, and he didn't do it. That's right. But look at chapter 4 and verse 1. Jonah's got a malady, but it displeased Jonah exceedingly. And he was very... Very angry. Hmm. Now let's think about this. Why was Jonah angry? Because he felt like his pride was on the line. Mm. And I then said that, and now look what you're doing, God. You're not even going to do what you said you'd do. Right. After I blabbed it to everybody. Yeah. So he had lost face. Yes. As a prophet. He took his glory away. Oh, he took whose glory away? Jonah's. Yes. Jonah's glory. Oh God, give us some people who are willing to sacrifice their pride and their glory and not take up this Jonah syndrome. Forty days, he yelled, and Nineveh shall fall. And it did not fall. How many times have you said, be healed in the name of Jesus, and they were not healed? It's not up to us to do the healing, girls. Mm -mm. It's not up to us to save people. 
That's God's business. Yes. All we are is the servant to go and do as he bids Amen. and leave the results to him. If you can get that down in your spirit today, you'll be a free woman. <laughs> yes. Because then you can go in faith and say, man, I'm going to pray for you and believe in Jesus. Hallelujah. And let God, let God sort out the all the details. Yes. So he had even said what God said, what God told him to say. Chapter 4, verse 2 says, I knew you were gracious and you are merciful. You're slow to anger and great kindness. I knew they repented you wouldn't destroy them, God. I knew it. That's why I told you before I even went and ran off to Tarshish. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to because I knew he was going to make me say that and I was going to look dumb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just let me die in verse 3. Let me die! Mama, did I we pray, say, I can we die? Yes. We said I'll together, I just want to die Jesus, please, when Jessica died. Die. I want to die. I'll I don't want to be here. I don't know how to face tomorrow. Woo! Mm -mm. Verse 3, therefore, now, O oh Lord, take, uh, I beseech thee, my life from me. Woo! <laughs> Ready, dead, die for it would be better if I could just be dead. Yes. Oh, for it's better for me to die than to live. <laughs> My last name would jump. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, true. now we can look back at it with Thank clear, God for I mean, hindsight is 20 20, y'all, but when you're in the battle, it's tough. Yeah. It's tough it's to killer. raise up the shield of faith. It it's tough killer. to hang on to God and say, I'm going to trust you to pull this up for me because I'm lost right now. Help me, Jesus. It's better for me to die than to live. You know why? Because I'm not getting my way. That's right. I prayed and you didn't do it. Yep. I said it and you didn't perform. Yes. Aren't you supposed to be my vending machine? Yes. Put in my 50 cents of prayer and get out my hamburger, hot dog, or whatever else comes out of the vending machine? Candy bar? Yeah. Well, you didn't do it, so I'm mad. Yeah. That's the yeah. Jonah syndrome. Isn't it ugly? Yes. Yeah. Isn't it selfish? Yes. Now let's keep going down here a little bit. Oh my goodness. Verse 4, the Lord talks to Jonah and he says, Then said the Lord, Doest thou well to be angry? <laughs> do we ever do well when we're angry? No. No, no but we I don't. Yield, I yield what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my goodness. So, you know the story. Jonah goes out and he starts Ooh. pouting outside of the, of the city in Nineveh. Now, I want you to go look at verse 11 with me. And should not I spare Nineveh, that great city, wherein are more than six score thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, and also much cattle? There's more than 120,000 people, Jonah. Is it saving 120,000 people better than making just one of his prophets look good? It's not about us looking good. It's not about us, period. Except that we win with the shield of faith up. Isaiah 55, we won't go there for lack of time. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says, My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. We don't know the whole picture, and we don't know what eternity holds, and we no. don't know the end even of our own lives. No. So we got to leave that in the hands of God. Mm -hmm. We pick up our shields of faith. We quench the fiery dart of pride, and we say, Lord, I believe, and I'll do my part, even if it doesn't turn out like I expected yes. or like I wanted. Yes. I'll have no indictments against God. I'll have faith. I will act on faith, and I will leave the results to you. That is... Is that being a real faithful person. That is faith at its highest. Second Timothy two thirteen. This scripture always just brings tears to my eyes. When I read it alone, I probably won't get any tears in my eyes right now because I'm standing in front of y'all on the camera. But when you read this in the quiet time by yourself, look at Second Timothy two thirteen. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. Yeah. He cannot deny himself. Every word he said is true. He cannot go back and say, well, I meant it sometimes for that person and sometimes for that person and sometimes in this situation. He is the same and he cannot change. And he cannot deny himself. 
He abides faithful when we are not faithful. Mm -hmm. Thank the Lord for that. Mm -hmm. This is also an awesome thing that I want to pull out before we close <coughs> up. Faith is contagious. Faith is contagious. In the Roman days, they used their shields often together during a rain of arrows when laying a siege to a fortified hill or a walled city, they would form what's called a testudo or a tortoise formation. Greek, historic, Greek historian Plutarch, I can't, it's hard to say his name, Plutarch writes, but the full armed infantry facing around received light troops within and those in the first rank knelt on one knee, holding their shields before them. The next rank holding theirs over the first. And so again, others over these. Much like the tiling of a house or rows of seats in a theater. The whole affording defense against arrows which glance upon them without doing any harm. When you put together people who believe in God... You have a fortification that no devil in hell can break through. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Ah! That was from Lives of the Noble Grecians in Romans chapter 60. Now how many times have you been letting your shield leak down and brother sister comes along and says, God will help us. We can do it. Yes. And all of a sudden, faith rises back up. Ah, I knew you could. I knew you could. And I knew I could. I know I can do it with you. Come on, let's do it together. Well, a two-fold cord is not easily broken. We're always stronger together. Yes. Yeah. Lynette encouraged my faith one time, y'all. I had been teaching on faith in Kids in the Lighthouse. We were in 4-H, and we had to catch a bunch of horses, and we had to get them ready for 4-H. And there was this ornery horse named Faxon that was out in the field, and he was hard to catch. And we didn't have time to wait on his ridiculousness. We needed him to be caught and washed and braided and go. And so Lynette walks out the pen <laughs> after we <laughs> we've been talking faith, praise Jesus, and she pointed at that sorrel horse with the big stocking legs, and she said, In the name of Jesus, I have authority over you, Faxon, and you be still and I'm gonna catch you. She walked up and caught that horse. She walked right straight up to him and was looking at him like, this little redhead means business. <laughs> You yeah. gotta mean business. When you're in battle, you're holding up a shield. Amen. Yeah. And I was encouraged to say, Yeah, 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 praise God. <laughs> and you know what? I started talking like that too. Mm -hmm. Jonathan in first uh, Samuel 14 6, he said to his armor bearer, Let's go over to the enemy. It may be the Lord will work for us. There's no restraint to the Lord to save by many or few. And the sweet little armor bearer said, Yeah, do all that's in your heart. I'm with you. <laughs> yes. I love it. Verses 12 through 16, they write, at, I mean, a huge victory. It, it, it looked like they plowed up the field with oxen as Jonathan got on his hands and feet and ran, and the armor bearer was whacking off their heads right behind him, and the, the enemy was defeated. And guess what the Bible says? It says that the enemy went on beating down one another. They just beat each other up. All it takes... Is for you to get started. It's your it's it's your faith that moves God, not your problems. Yeah. yeah. Your faith moves the hand of God. Yes. Yay! So awesome. I'm sure Jonathan probably said, "You take that shield because I've got my own." Woo! And he he got, took down on his hands and feet. Who fights battles like that? Nobody but faith-filled people. Nobody's going to get down in front of their enemy on their hands and their feet. But somebody who's got faith and somebody bigger than they are. Yes. Oh, praise God. The shield has no shelf life. It's still good. Mm -hmm. We just need to raise it up. Yeah. We yeah. need to use it. It doesn't get old. Mm -mm. It's not rusty. And no. it doesn't have any mold on it. No. <laughs> it's ready to be used today. It can take a licking and keep on ticking. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, think about this. Back in the uh, Old Testament, Caleb's 85 years old. He's 40 whenever he first stands up for God. And then he has to go through 40 years, 40 of them, girls, of wandering around aimlessly in a wilderness. Then, after they cross Jordan, five more years of conflict. He finally comes to Joshua and says, My faith shield is still as good as it ever was. 
Give him this mountain full of giants and he's 85 years old. And the Bible says he went and went them out and named the city Hebron and took it for his inheritance. Yes. Man! And then you look at David. And what I thought was cool about this, they both fought giants. Caleb's 85. Age don't matter, Sister Bass. <laughs> you can still fight your enemy. Amen. Amen. Then you look at, at, at David. David's 14 to 18, somewhere in there, a little strapping lad. And he fights a lion and a bear. Mm -hmm. And then he kills the giant. Mm -hmm. yes. Age doesn't matter. Cuts his head off. Exactly. Oh, man. I love faith. Raising your, your shield says, I believe in the promises of God. I will act on them, whatever the outcome. I know my shield is still good. Mm -hmm. Faith allows us to please God. Hebrews 11, 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, first of all, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Jesus raised the question. This is an article from Sound Faith. He raised the question in the context of patience, endurance, through difficulties, through trials, through tests, whether Jesus would find faith on the earth when he returns. Mm -hmm. To use our shield of faith, that <coughs> passage of scripture is found in Luke 18, 7 and 8. To use our shield of faith like it's meant to be used, we must first understand that God has provided for our defense. And he has provided the strength to keep it up. Blessed are they which do endure mm -hmm. until the end. If you're not enduring, it's because you've lost your strength in God. Mm -hmm. You're not depending on the strength of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You depend on His strength, He'll help you endure to the end. That's right. Secondly, repent. Lay down any indictments against God and forsake the Jonah Syndrome. Yes. Amen. We're going to have victory if we'll just follow God. Three, raise our shields of faith for one another. Let's fight in this thing together. You're not alone. Even Timothy said, uh, resist the devil, your adversary, who resists steadfastly, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Mm -hmm. And number four, keep it raised and stand your ground until he returns. Amen. Yes. Here's the personal question for today. Will your shield be raised and still fending off the enemy when Jesus returns? Mm -hmm. That's the question for us on a daily basis. We get out of bed, we got to pick a shield up. Yeah. <laughs> you're a target because you're a soldier of the cross. You're loved and you're saved by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. Satan hates you because God loves you. He is bent on bringing you down, which is why we must take up the shield of faith, cling to your trust in God, believe his word despite your own feelings or doubts, and you can keep your shield up because he's faithful to provide the strength you need. Yes. Now just close your eyes with me for a minute. This is also from another article. And I want you to just think about what this guy's saying. On a chilly morning, up on a hill, he stands side by side with his comrades. They do not march out. They wait for the battle to come to them. And they have no doubt that it will. Their orders are simple. Defend your position and stand your ground. He remembers the captain speaking just a few hours ago to the entire battalion. Your enemy has no mercy. He will fight you. They will kill you if they can, any way that they can. You must stand your ground. Your armor will protect you as long as your courage does not fail. Your victory is sure as long as you keep your shield up and your feet on the ground. Immediately his thoughts are interrupted by the sound of a fierce army marching closer and closer. He lifts up his shield and prepares to make his stand. We must take our stand against the enemy. The one who shows no mercy, who will fight, defeat, and destroy us if he can. Our armor, including our shield of faith, will protect us as long as our courage does not fail. Our victory is sure as long as we keep our shield up and our feet on the solid ground of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. That was an excerpt from an article by Sound Faith. Ephesians 6, 16. Above all, ladies, take up the shield of faith 
wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked.